If you're searching for a dream home but need help choosing the right property or the right location, you've come to the right channel. Hello and welcome. You're watching Property Hotline with me, Kavita Krishnan on Magic Bricks Now. Our special guest today is Ashutosh Limay. Ashutosh is the National Director of Research at JLL. Ashutosh, welcome to the show. Delighted. Uh, let's kick start with a Facebook query. Sunil V. Mane writes in, says he owns two houses in Pune. Now, both are two BHK properties. One, a duplex sized uh, 1400 square feet and the other is 900 square feet in area. Now, they're located at Mohammadwadi and Bibwewadi. He wants to sell both the properties and buy a 3 BHK either in camp or at Prabhat Road. He wants suggestions of the properties that he could invest in. Okay. Uh, I think uh, both the areas that he mentioned, Mohammadwadi uh, as well as Bivewadi, are suburban areas of Pune. Hmm. Uh, Mohammadwadi uh, price ranges uh, between 4,500 to about 6,500, uh, whereas uh, Bivewadi is slightly more. Uh, it, uh, but uh, two houses together, if he sells them, I think he will be able to uh, uh, garner about a crore and 70 lakhs. Uh, one house for about 80 lakhs, the other house uh, for about 90 lakhs. Uh, if you look at uh, Camp or Prabhat Road, Camp per se, uh, it's Korigao Park or Dole Patil Road where uh, projects are uh, coming up. Uh, whereas in Prabhat Road, uh, there are a few projects. Uh, here the rates are between 16,500 to about 19,500. Uh, so uh, the 1.7 crores that uh, he will uh, generate by selling these two houses, he will fetch uh, uh, a good 3 BHK uh, apartment uh, in, in both Prabhat Road areas as well as uh, Dore Patil or uh, uh, Korega Park. Uh, only thing is because these two areas are prime, uh, we don't have too many projects here. Uh, very few uh, groups who are active and, and they typically uh, construct high-end uh, properties. Marvel is one group, Panaspe Schemes is another. Uh, Amar builders have got uh, a few projects here. Uh, so the, the math is working for him uh, to sell both uh, these houses and, and buy about a 3 BHK. Yeah, yeah, here. Ashutosh, that brings me to my next question. Uh, you know, the math looks right, like yeah. you said. The math does work. He can sell these two properties, buy a nice big 3 BHK in uh, one of Pune's toniest localities, which is Koregao Park and all of that. But the fact is, at the end of the day, uh, we know that the market is just about turning. Now, most people, including you uh, yourself, uh, earlier I remember you had uh, advised someone else, another call on the show saying that, you know, it's not the right time to sell. Uh, what is the probability of him you know, being able to sell both of these and then use that money to buy something else. Uh, does it look like a long-term solution for you? Is there something else that you could probably, uh, you know, look at doing if he wants to buy the property as soon yeah, as possible? I think, yeah, I, I think he uh, he has not mentioned the, whether uh, he can organize funds without selling um, those houses. Uh, if he can, uh, it, it's a good time to buy. Uh, having said that, uh, in prime locations, the supply is limited. So, uh, generally speaking, when we say that it's a bias market, in prime areas, it is fairly neutral market. So, that way, he has to uh, decide fairly quickly. Uh, I think uh, selling two houses simultaneously is a task, yes, uh, because uh, uh, property sales don't happen that fast. Uh, but I think uh, being suburban locations, he will have uh, buyers uh, to those two uh, houses. Uh, if he can, probably he can sell only one and, and retain one and, and then organize finances by some other means uh, and, and actually effect the purchase first if, if he can afford to. Uh, that way he can ensure that he gets a good uh, apartment in those uh, Tony locations because the supply is, is short mm -hmm. and, and then uh, he, he can wait to time the market as a seller. So, Sunil, essentially, here's what you need to do. It is a buyer's market and not really a seller's market, like Ashutosh also pointed out. The good thing to do would be to go and lock your purchase first, try and buy that home that you've set your eye on, and then look to, you know, sell off the other properties and uh, fund uh, that home. Because, uh, and I'm assuming over here that uh, if you're buying in a locality like this, chances are you're probably buying an under construction property, which means you don't have to pay everything up front. So you actually have time in your hand to sell the uh, properties and then use it to uh, complete the payment on the new home. So that is something that you can look at doing because like Ashutosh put it, selling two pro properties at this point in time in the market is quite a task. As the developers. Let's move on. We have a website query now. Aditya says that he wants to buy a property in Noida, sector 93 or in 137 for investment. He plans to use the property for end use after three to four years. His budget is around 40 to 65 lakh rupees. Now, he wants suggestions of projects that he can invest in. Ashutosh, now this is a market that has 
uh, taken a lot of beating because of the kind of delays that we are seeing. But that also would make uh, uh, properties cheaper over here. Uh, they are uh, uh, at, a, at a bargain price right now. Uh, but uh, let me tell you, uh, the quarter that uh, ended in June, there was no single new launch that happened in Noida or Greater Noida. That means uh, that uh, new supply is, is not uh, uh, happening there. Developers are focusing on the existing inventory uh, to, to sell. Uh, that means as buyers, uh, while today they are in a great position, over a period of next few weeks or months, uh, their relative strength in bargaining is going to diminish. So that way uh, he needs to, uh, since he has already decided the sectors also, uh, hoping that he has done his homework well, uh, since the locations are chosen, I think he should go ahead, start negotiating and uh, buy. Both these sectors, uh, there are plenty of uh, properties available for about 6,000 rupees a square foot or even under. Uh, that means uh, he, he will get uh, uh, properties within his uh, budget. We have projects from Logix, we have projects uh, from uh, Unnati uh, uh, Group. Uh, so th there, is, there is fair deal of uh, uh, choice uh, uh, for him. Uh, also, uh, he, actually it is for his end use. Only thing is he is going to move in only after three or four years. But my advice to him is uh, uh, still buy a, a completed one or, or nearing completed uh, uh, property. Uh, he can rent it out for those three or four years, uh, not uh, uh, get tempted to buy under construction property because there is too much of risk there. Uh, you, you suggested he buy a ready property and rent it out. Now between sector 93 and sector 137, uh, from a rental perspective, uh, which is the better one to invest in? Where would you get better rents? And uh, you know, not, not not much to choose from really. Actually, uh, both both sectors have uh, equal uh, kind of uh, potential uh, in terms of uh, rental housing uh, uh, demand. Uh, so uh, I think it it will come down to the project that he likes. But uh, sector 93 over here is priced uh, higher. It's uh, 93A, 93B range between 7,900 rupees uh, per square foot. Uh, meanwhile, uh, if you were to look at sector 137, uh, that is priced uh, much lower. Uh, there it is, 5,183 rupees per square foot. Uh, so, uh, would you? I think uh, both from sectors. From a price perspective. Uh, no, I think both both sectors have their own uh, clientele for uh, rental housing. Uh, Noida offers uh, entry level jobs in IT, ITES for a substantial population. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that means that for every salary bracket, there is enough uh, demand for rental housing. So, I, and that's why I said that it, it's more on the project merit that uh, and, and his personal liking about the kind of quality of space uh, he, he likes. Uh, both sectors will have a fair opportunity uh, for rental housing as well as for him to settle four years later on. Today, if he were to settle, I would have uh, advised him uh, sector uh, uh, 92, uh, 94. And, and uh, if, but, but that's not the case, he still has three or four years. By that time, uh, 137 also will be uh, uh, equally established. Right. So that's your answer there. Sector 93, nine, uh, 93 is a good bet if you want to settle in today. But if you're looking to settle down three to four years down the line, you can actually look at sector 137. Obviously, you've done your homework there. Um, and uh, even though you are looking to uh, settle in three to four years down the line, like Ashutosh said, Considering the market conditions, it's better that you buy into a ready property. Pratibha has dialed in from Gwalior, I'm told. Uh, Pratibha, how can we help you? Uh, good evening, sir. I want ready or under construction. 2 be minimum 950 to 1,000 1, square foot flat mm -hmm. at Old Panvel. Okay. And budget is 70 to 75 lakhs. 70 to 75 lakhs. Yeah. Have you identified anything, Pratibha? Anything that you have your eye on? No, no. Not yet. Okay, and this is for end use or for investment? Maybe. Sorry? No, invest no investment. They're for end use. You end intend use. to end settle end in yeah. over there. Yeah. Okay. So, 70 to 75 lakhs. She's looking at old Panvel. What would you suggest? Uh, I think it, it, it's a sufficient budget. Uh, old Panvel is, is a relatively small enclave uh, and, and that means that we have fewer properties here. I think she needs to also uh, look for uh, secondary uh, sales as well uh, because the primary market uh, may not offer uh, enough options uh, being an established uh, older uh, neighborhood. Uh, the, the prices will be typically between 5,000 and 6,000 rupees uh, a square foot. In secondary market, it could be slightly lower also depending on the age of the uh, building that uh, she, she finds in. Uh, but in terms of uh, new projects, we have uh, two or three uh, projects here. Uh, we have projects from Vedant Group, we have projects from Garnet Group. 
uh, where, where she can find a good spacious 2 BHK. Uh, high chances that she will find a 3 BHK also uh, within that budget. And an Opal Mill is a central area, all amenities very nearby. So uh, a good place in terms of infrastructure uh, that is present, good place to live. Right, good place to live and that's the laundry list of uh, projects that are Ashutosh recommended upon your uh, screen right there. Also, uh, Ashutosh, you mentioned that she should probably, you know, even look at the resale market. Now, in the resale market, uh, to your mind, uh, what is a safe, uh, you know, when you look at the age of the property, what is a safe time period to buy into? Five-year-old property, seven, ten-year-old property? Uh, I think uh, up to ten years uh, of uh, uh, age, uh, we don't anticipate major repairs. Uh, so uh, th that means that the current maintenance that the current landlord is paying, it's most likely to remain that way for a, a, f a fair, fair uh, number of years. Uh, but if the property is more than 10 years old, then one needs to, uh, to inspect the property carefully in terms of whether there are uh, visible signs of some major repairs uh, that are going to uh, be needed in, in the future. And that means that uh, the, the maintenance or one-time uh, kind of input uh, for, for those repairs could be substantial. substantial. And you'll have to price that in when you negotiate uh, with the current uh, landlord. Also, some, uh, sometimes it happens that major repairs have just completed. That, that's a good sign because then you know that for, for a uh, number of years, the maintenance is going to be low because the expenditure has been already um, uh, incurred. Mm -hmm. That's typically uh, uh, to look for when the properties are between 10 and 15 years of age. So ideally, you should be buying a property that is less than 10 years of age. That way you are, uh, you know, you're, you're sorted at least for the next couple of years. You don't have any major uh, uh, expenses going from your pocket to maintain that particular building or else look for something where the maintenance has already been done. That's also a nice thing to look at. Uh, we have a caller from Pune now. Hamid Kazi has dialed in. Hamid, how can we help you? Hi. Uh, Hi. Thanks for taking my call. Uh, I want to invest uh, up to 2.5 crores mm -hmm. in uh, a two or three bedroom residential property in Mumbai. Okay. Uh, my sole objective is a rental yield, and uh, I am looking for a ready-to-move-in uh, property. I do not want to wait too long. Maybe uh, something which is near position or ready to move in uh, is uh, something that I am looking at. Okay. Hamid, uh, he's very clear about what he wants. Have you also identified any location? Uh, so... I, I like Andheri East. Uh, I think uh, it's it's a location where uh, I, I see a lot of uh, uh, commercial uh, company corporate uh, movement. But I am uh, location agnostic. If if you tell me that say Andheri West is a better um, rental yield market, then I I can go there or anywhere else as well. You know, Ashutosh, that's a very interesting question. Which is a better market when it comes to? Rental yields in Mumbai, he has a 2.5 crore budget. That's a very substantial budget yeah. to work with for Mumbai. Yeah, I think and, and it's uh, one of those rare questions where uh, homework is done in terms of the rental returns. Because in India, uh, the rental returns are not that great and, and, and the yields are often sub-3%, sub-2.5% as well. Uh, Mumbai has two corridors though, which, which offer more than 3% uh, rental yield at the moment. Eastern suburbs between uh, Vikroli and Mulun and western suburbs between Ville Parle and Goregaf today are giving 3.3% of yield, which is very good uh, considering the history of rental yields that uh, we have seen in most cities of the country. Uh, Andheri falls in that uh, corridor, uh, on the, the western uh, suburban corridor uh, between Ville Parle and uh, Goregaf. And both Andheri East as well as Andheri, Andheri West, both have significant office uh, areas. That means that there is a good rental demand and that's uh, reflected in the good yield also. The eastern suburbs also have good rental demand because Pawai is a very established office district now and Vikroli and Kanjurmark have seen newer office complexes getting completed. So that way, these two corridors are a good bet for him to look for. Both will meet uh, the, the budget as well. So he can buy two BHK uh, property between Ville Parle and Goregaon. He can afford to buy two properties in, in the same budget, one in the eastern uh, suburbs between Vikaroli and uh, Mulun, a 2 BHK one, and then the surplus money that uh, he will uh, still have, uh, he can buy a compact 1 BHK in Thane as well, which is another uh, rental uh, housing market. So he has a choice. He, he buys one property in the western suburbs, 
one property in, in Eastern, if, if he goes for a, a high-end kind of property, or one mid-end property in Eastern suburbs plus one uh, compact one BHK in, in Thane. That means he can hedge his risk better. So, Hamid, you asked for one and uh, uh, Ashutosh here has given you two or three options over here. You know, one more question from my side, Ashutosh. You mentioned the Vikroli Mulund uh, corridor and the Villeparle Goregao uh, corridor, which are doing well in terms of rentals because of the commercial market over there. What about Pawai itself? Or, uh, you know, for that matter, also uh, the BKC area? Because we have been seeing a lot of activity in and around BKC. I'm not talking specifically BKC because there isn't yep. too much of property, uh, residential property over there. But there is a substantial activity around that area. Would you also recommend these areas because these are commercial hubs? Uh, well, uh, logically, those two areas also qualify, uh, but in terms of his budget, uh, he may not be able to find uh, the right properties because both these areas, uh, Pawai core uh, and uh, BKC doesn't have too much of residential as you said, mm -hmm. but around BKC, uh, the, the Bandra uh, area, uh, it's difficult for him to find uh, a 2 BHK property uh, in that 2.5 uh, crores, it, uh, he will have to spend more. And, and there, uh, in both areas, uh, the rental housing market is not as lucrative for a 1 BHK uh, property. The yield will not be uh, that attractive uh, for him. Uh, that's why, uh, while logically, yes, these areas could be uh, studied. But uh, in terms of practical availability of uh, properties at uh, that price point, uh, unlikely. Right, Hamid. So that's your advice, and uh, I would uh, I would uh, really recommend that you know you consider the very practical solution that uh, Ashutosh gave you of actually hedging your bets and investing in two different markets at one time rather than investing in one property in a particular market. Also remember that it's easier to sell smaller properties than bigger, larger, uh, humongous properties in this market. So if you do choose to exit, it's fast. You'll find that it's easier to exit a smaller pro size property. Rajesh now, who's dialed in from Mumbai. Rajesh, how can we help you? Yeah, good evening, ma'am. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, ma'am, uh, just uh, I recently got shifted from Patna uh, to Mumbai. So I'm uh, very new about uh, Mumbai. And uh, my office is in uh, Orly. Okay. So I'm looking for one BHK. My budget is 40 to 45 lakh rupees. And uh, both like Thane, uh, Thane, Western Line as well as Central Line, both uh, suits to me. So, what will be the best location where I can find uh, one BHK uh, for uh, like uh, just I, uh, I can uh, in 40 to 45 lakh rupees budget. 40 to 45 lakh rupees budget, one BHK and he works in Worli. He is not a Mumbaiker which means he is not really used to the local train over here. So, we need to give him a location that he can you know easily travel to and fro from. Uh, I think, unfortunately, he will have to uh, get accustomed to the local uh, train travel because I think uh, uh, the, the budget that he has, uh, very difficult to find properties where he can travel by road uh, in, in, a, in a fairly reasonably short time. Uh, so, I, so I think his primary mode of transport is going to be uh, a local uh, a train network. And that means that uh, he should find or he should look for properties as close to any of the suburban stations. Uh, now uh, and, and and in Mumbai, the closer uh, you go towards stations, the the property price uh, rises. Uh, given the budget, I think he has he has two choices basically. Uh, if he if he prefers to live near a railway station, then unfortunately he has to uh, look for areas which are uh, beyond Mira Road, Bhinder. Uh, the the most likely areas where he will find properties uh, uh, with a walkable distance from station would be Vasai, Nala Sopara, Virar on the western line. Uh, I don't think he will find uh, that kind of property in Thane. Uh, Thane, on Ghodbandar Road, away from the station, yes, uh, uh, he will be able to find properties in that budget. But uh, closer to station, then he will have to probably look for areas beyond Thane. Uh, if, say, Kalwa, Diva, uh, uh, Dombivli, Kalyan, where uh, in, in that budget he will uh, find properties near, uh, near to station. There could be some pockets within uh, suburban Mumbai, for example, say uh, Charkop or, or Gorai, uh, where uh, he, he might be uh, might get lucky to find uh, properties in that budget, but those areas are away from the station. So he'll, ha he'll have to uh, build in about uh, half an hour's uh, uh, time, uh, every time uh, to and fro from, from the station to his house. Right. And Rajesh, uh, those are the prices that we're showing you on the screen. Vase is currently priced at around 5,188 rupees per square foot. My team will put up uh, the prices for Virar and Kalyan and Dombivli as well, uh, Mira Road also. That's it, Virar at 4,476 rupees per square foot. Uh, 
Kalyan, priced at 5,706 rupees per square foot. Now, uh, one thing you need, uh, one piece of advice that I can give you as a Mumbaikar, uh, Rajesh, is that uh, if you are, you know, if you have no other option but to take the local train to travel, one thing that you could do is look at buying into places like, for instance, Kalyan or Dombivli, where trains actually terminate or start from. That way, your travel becomes that much more easier. So that is something you can consider doing uh, if you're planning to buy a flat in the far-flung suburbs. Email query next. Ganesh Selvarajan says that he plans to invest in Chennai. He has zeroed in on Oragadam. Now, he wants to know if Oragadam is a good investment bet. He asks if there are any prevailing issues like water or power here. He also wants to know if this will become a residential hub in the future. What is your take on Oragadam? Yes, I think I think it's it's a locality for uh, future. Yeah, it it does have uh, good promise uh, in terms of uh, becoming a feeding residential district uh, to uh, economic um, neighborhoods. Uh, on one side, there is uh, Shri Perumbudur. Uh, Oragadam is very well on the uh, automobile uh, corridor. We have the auto companies uh, uh, conveniently located from uh, Oragadam as a residential district. Also on the southeastern side, we have the Mahindra World City. Uh, so that way, uh, the Oragadam district is fairly well connected and within comfortable traveling distance from these uh, economic engines. Uh, the manufacturing uh, engines of uh, Chennai. So, so that way, uh, it, it does uh, uh, promise to, to become a good residential uh, district in future. At the moment, it does not have all the social infrastructure uh, as, as one uh, requires. But actually, uh, we see that uh, infrastructure happening in next uh, two to three years. Today, the, the price is highly affordable. Uh, 3,000 to 3,500, lots of options in, in that um, uh, price range. Good time to buy uh, in, uh, in, in Oragadam uh, today. Uh, if uh, he buys into an under construction project where the possession is between 6 and 12 months, that's a, a, a fairly reasonable risk to take. Chennai uh, does not have that severe problem of, of delays as we have in some other markets of the country. Uh, and, and social infrastructure is getting built up. Physical infrastructure is by and large there in place. Uh, so uh, I think Oragadam is a good bet uh, if he envisages himself to work in those economic um, uh, engines. If it is Chennai where he is working, then uh, yes, the, the commuting is not very easy. Okay, but uh, he is basically buying to invest over there. Now, one uh, specific thing that he's asked is whether Oragadam has uh, sufficient water and power supply because uh, that is a problem in some areas of uh, Chennai. In fact, that is one of the biggest problems in Chennai. Uh, what is your? Have you heard anything on that front? Uh, uh, not really. Nothing of uh, a serious nature. And and uh, this is something that uh, he sh he should be careful about when uh, he visits projects and the kind of amenities developers uh, have promised. So most projects uh, in in those localities uh, will provide uh, uh, backup power, will provide uh, some backup for uh, water as well. Uh, so that is something that he can check at the project level that that uh, he is examining. Right. And on the screen, that what we're showing you is a prop index for Chennai. Now, uh, prices over there are the average for the whole of Chennai. Uh, so you'll see prices ranging from 5,000 to 6,000 rupees uh, per square foot. Uh, but the reason why we brought this up is very simple. Since you're looking to invest over there, that shows the difference between ready-to-move-in property and uh, under-construction property. The green line is ready-to-move-in, the yellow line is under-construction a difference of almost 1,000 rupees per square foot over there. So, you know, you would uh, you'd probably be better off taking Ashutosh's advice and uh, investing into property that will get delivered in the next six to eight months. That way, you will also be able to save on uh, some money. Moving on, we have uh, Samir now who's called in from Mumbai. How can we help you, Samir? Yeah, hi. I'm planning to buy a flat in uh, Mumbai, Ghatkopa West, in, on Albius Road. Okay. And the project is by JP Homes. It's called Executive. Hmm. What is the uh, uh, what's the status like? Is it a good option to buy? Okay, you want to know whether it's a good option to buy into that project? Yeah, yeah. Ashutosh, uh, have you heard of this project? What do you think? Uh, I, I would rather stick to uh, the location uh, uh, than commenting on the project. Uh, uh, Ghatkopar West, uh, along LBS Road, the market rate is between 15,000 to 18,500 rupees a square foot. Uh, and, and that way, uh, it, 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 in fact, he's, he's getting a good deal uh, if it is uh, 15,000 rupees a, a square foot. 
uh, we don't have uh, too many projects uh, along or just off uh, LBS road. It's a busy corridor, uh, dense uh, built up area. Uh, we have two or three uh, uh, projects there of uh, uh, good uh, developers. Uh, we, we have from Acme, we have from Skyline, we have from Hilton. He, he has chosen one project himself. Uh, so I think uh, comparing those projects, uh, uh, he will be in a position to uh, really benchmark them. Uh, it will not be very difficult uh, for him. But in terms of price, I think that's very much within uh, the market price there. Right, so you've got a, got yourself a good deal on the price over there. Uh, but uh, you know what we can tell you this, that if you are looking to buy into an under construction property, some, some of the things that you need to do is A, visit that site at least uh, you know, three or four times before you sign on the dotted line and ensure that you visit at different times of the day so you know uh, whether or not work is happening on that particular site. Talk to buyers who bought into projects by this developer earlier, projects that he's already dev delivered. So you will get a fair idea of whether the pro de project, whether developer you know, actually delivers on time and whether there are problems after uh, they've bought into the project, etc. And of course, do your due diligence uh, check all the approvals before you <coughs> sign on the dotted line and get a get a legal expert to look at the, uh, that agreement, right? Uh, next, we have uh, Bharat Raj who sent in a question on our website. Now, he wants to buy a 1 BHK Jodi flat in the western suburbs of Mumbai between Malad and Burivli West. He asks what is the approximate budget that he should plan for? Are new projects with builders with good track records available in this configuration. He says that he's open to resale properties as long as the project offers good amenities and is not older than five to seven years. Do you get one BHK Jodi flats? Uh, I don't think in uh, newer uh, projects uh, there will be plentiful of options available for him. Uh, yes, some projects uh, do have one BHK configuration, uh, but one BHK being a very popular configuration, it gets sold pretty fast. So I'm not really sure whether uh, he will find uh, two adjacent one BHK flats uh, available for uh, purchase. Uh, if he finds uh, that that pair, great for him. Uh, uh, but uh, it, 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 it's a tough uh, uh, kind of situation. Uh, between Malad West and Borivli West, uh, it, it, it's a variety of uh, projects uh, that, that, that he can uh, look at. The, the rates are uh, from 12,000 rupees a square foot towards the Borivli end of it uh, uh, and, and uh, we have about 18,000 rupees a square foot. Uh, fairly well dispersed uh, market, not that uh, Borivli is less expensive and Malad is expensive. It could be the other way around also, uh, depending on, on the micro pockets uh, within mm. those uh, uh, suburban locations. Uh, all three suburbs, Malad, Kandivli and Borivli are very well developed suburbs, all infrastructure in place. Uh, it has got a history of residential development of decades. That means there is a right. sufficient uh, inherent demand from these very localities. Right. But essentially what you're saying is this is a very, very specific request. This kind of configuration is something that you'll only find when you actually go out into the market and look at projects because it's not every developer who makes two 1 BHK flats, you know, beside each other. It's typically a 1 BHK, 2 BHK configuration that you see. So that is something that you really need to look for. Here's what I can tell you. Bharat, go out, uh, shortlist a couple of projects, come back to us. Then we will help you uh, narrow it down and uh, we'll, be able to, uh, we'll be in a better position to tell you which one works and which doesn't, right? That's it on today's episode of Property Hotline. Ashutosh Limay, thank you very much for joining us, for answering all those questions. If you have any queries related to real estate, do get in touch with us. We'll get the country's top experts to answer each and every single question that you send in. That's a promise. Thank you very much for watching Property Hotline. Keep watching Magic Bricks now. You can watch live TV on our website mbnow.in. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash magic bricks now. And don't forget to click the like button. You can also follow us on Twitter at Magic Bricks Now. To stay updated with all our programming, hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel by logging on to youtube.com forward slash Magic Bricks Now.